All right, hey guys, it's Byte here, and I got a tutorial for you on how to fix up CSGO models and attachments. Uh, so before I get started, um, you're going to need a few tools. You're going to need Crowbar, just to use to uh, decompile and compile model files. You'll need CSGO SDK for the Half-Life Model Viewer, and just any text editor using Notepad++ here. All right, so the actual problem is uh, in CSGO and also other source games that use the uh, same modeling files, you're gonna have um, you're gonna have various models. Let me just uh, open the one I wanna fix today. All right, so you're gonna have various models that have hitboxes that are not quite perfect. So we have this model right here, Mikasa Ackerman from Attack on Titan. And if I press Control H to bring up the hitboxes, you see it's using one of the default CT hitboxes. Uh, for CSGO, this is one of the um, CT skins. I think it's the FBI skin. And as you can see, the um, the hitbox isn't exactly perfect. It doesn't align with the mesh properly. So for example, uh, at the top here, the head, which is probably the most important part of the hitbox, you can see if you um, shoot a bullet right above the head where there is no... Um, where the mesh is not there. If the bullet connects, that's going to do damage. You can see the body, it's like way too wide here, here. And that's going to um, pretty much cause issues. The feet as well, just way too big. The hitbox is too big. And um, yeah, pretty much these are not uh, ideal. And to fix them, what you really want to do is you want to shrink these hitboxes as much as possible so they're barely, um, barely bigger than the actual uh, body part or barely bigger than the actual mesh. So we're going to pretty much transform this hitbox into one that's pretty much close to perfect or as close to as perfect as you can get. And I'll show you a hitbox that is pretty close to perfect that I've done before. So for example, this is another hitbox that I fixed. And um, as you can see, if I go to Ragdoll, uh, this hitbox is pretty much as good as it gets. It's got everything aligned, everything's like matching the mesh exactly, the head, the body, the feet, and I'll show you a before version of this and an after version right now on screen, and yeah, so that's what it looked like before and that's what it looks like now, so that's pretty much the, um, the difference, and uh, it really shows in game when you're playing, so yeah, that's what we're going to be doing today. Alright, so um, in Source Model Viewer, we'll be using that to uh, check the hitboxes and fix any hitboxes that are like the wrong size or they don't match the mesh properly. And we'll also be checking attachments and fixing the position of attachments and adding any missing attachments, uh, in particular for CSGO, but uh, the same concepts apply for any other game. And attachments are uh, just, um, just various uh, control A to bring them up. The various attachments that the game can use to attach another model to this model. So things like um, guns, um, diffuse kits, the C4 on the back, um, the knife models, the grenade models, like things like that. All right, so uh, before we start, I guess we'll just do a little brief overview of how to use the uh, model viewer, because that is going to be the main thing we'll be using. Um, so in the model viewer, you can right click to zoom in and zoom out. So if you right click and move your mouse to the left and right, you will zoom in and I mean up and down, sorry, you'll zoom in and zoom out. Uh, you can left click to just drag the model around. If you go to the sequence tab, you can change the uh, sequence or the animation that is being played out. Uh, what you want to do is lock the frame on frame zero just so it doesn't keep animating and yeah all right so what we want to do is we want to keep the um, the sequence on either ragdoll or reposition to idle at frame zero because it's a very uh, generic pose and it's really easy to make the hitboxes we want for this pose all right so if we press control h again to bring up the hitboxes these are the hitboxes currently in the model. Before we can edit the model, we need to decompile it and recompile it. So we'll bring up Crowbar to do that. So uh, let's bring up Crowbar. Alright, so bring up Crowbar. We want to go to the Decompile tab. You don't really need to change any of these uh, options. Uh, just leave everything on default. Um, you want to load in the model file. And this is the one we're using, this path right here, this model. And you want to output it to some sort of folder that you want to work on. So I've got this path set up right here. 
you want to press decompile and it'll take a while and after it's done decompiling if you open up the folder and there we have it so we have the various files that have been decompiled and we got the QC file which is going to be the main file we'll be editing to actually uh, change the hitboxes and attachments we got the various reference SMD files, got the physics file, and these are the various animations. So after you decompile, the first thing you want to do is just recompile straight away, just to make sure there's no errors, because sometimes there'll be an error when recompiling. Um, so go to the, you can go to the compile tab or press use and compile here to just use the same uh, file that we just decompiled. And in the compile tab, you're going to have the QC file that we just decompiled, and you want to output this to the game's uh, main folder. Before we do that, we want to go to the folder and right click on our QC file and edit it. And right at the top there, you want to change the model name just so it's a different model name so we don't override our base model as we're doing our testing. So what I like to do is I just add a underscore T1 at the end, underscore test1. And I usually increment this if I'm, um, uh, as I make more and more changes and as I test them, um, for reasons I will mention later. So you want to save that and you want to come back here and press compile. Uh, one important note is when you're compiling um, you want to make sure you always let the compile finish before loading it in or refreshing in Half-Life Model Viewer uh, otherwise the Half-Life Model Viewer will crash and you'll have to reset it. Alright so in this case uh, we had an error um, and it did not compile properly even though we just decompiled it and uh, it can take some time to find out what exactly causes the error, but in this case, the error is caused by um, these lines here and the, yeah, this line here. So if we remove this sequence and the corresponding animation and save and then recompile, and there we go. And then it's done. So now if we just load in this new model that we decompiled, so we want to go into and by the way, this is the uh, so this is the folder, my CSGO folder the, with the path to this model. So this was the original model files, and this is the new one that I just compiled. So if I load this in to the Half-Life Model Viewer, and an easy way to do that is just to copy the path at the top here, and go File, Load Model, paste it in, open, and there we go. And then this is the model that we're going to be working on from now on out. And again, if we look at the hitboxes, we now have auto-generated hitboxes. And these are the ones that the model compiler auto-generates. And they're, they're pretty decent. Um, if you don't have any hitboxes at all, they can generate a you know fairly decent hitbox. But they're obviously not ideal. Um, there's still many improvements uh, that can be made. The main one is like the head. It's not spherical. So CSGO supports spherical and rectangular. Uh, hitboxes. Other games only support rectangular hitboxes. Alright, so the first thing we want to do is we want to go to the Bones tab and we want to unclick auto-generating hitboxes and press Generate QC. And what that does is it's going to copy to our clipboard all these default hitboxes just so we have a like starting point. Um, if you have models that look the same or like are very similar you can copy hitboxes from old models and make minor adjustments but for this video I'm just going to be doing it from scratch so if we press generate QC it's going to copy that uh, QC or it's going to copy the hitboxes to our um, clipboard and if we scroll down to the bottom here right at the end of the QC file is just where I like to put it uh, keep in mind that there are hitbox values defined here that are commented out and these are the ones that came with the model that we saw but we're just going to start from scratch and if we just paste them here and just add a few new lines there just to separate it alright and we have it there what I'm also going to do is just in a new tab, just paste the default hitbox is there and mark this tab as read only just so we don't accidentally, um, you know, delete anything or override anything, just so we have a reference. All right, and whenever we make a change like this, what we want to do is just uh, recompile the model. 
Don't have to do this all the time, but it's uh, usually a good idea just so the changes are reflected. And again, make sure you wait until the compilation is done before refreshing in Half-Life Model Viewer. All right, so once it's done and you see this last line, you go back to Half-Life Model Viewer, press F5 to refresh. And yeah, so nothing's changed obviously because we just added the same lines that were there before. But uh, yeah, now we can begin tweaking the hitboxes. All right, so before we can proceed, uh, we'll have a look at hitbox groups real quick. So each hitbox group has a different um, color attached to it. And I think they're the same in most games, but I might be wrong. But um, the hitbox group pretty much says what kind of hitbox it is. And it denotes what kind of damage the player takes and probably used in other collision checks and whatnot. But uh, you have the generic uh, group zero, which is generic and it's color coded white. Uh, we don't actually have that in this model uh, right now, but that's used for like extra things attached to the model or maybe non-player models. Uh, we have the head and neck, which is red, and that's hitbox group one. Hitbox group two is the upper body, which is green. Hitbox group three is the lower body, which is yellow. Uh, the left hand is uh, purple, which is hitbox group four. Hitbox group five is the right hand, which is pink. Hitbox group six is the left leg which is cyan, and hitbox group 7 is a right leg, which is gray. Explaining the actual hitbox params um, in the QC file. So if we look at the QC file, uh, we have this, this line like this. Like if we look at this first one, we have hbox, dollar hbox, uh, space zero, space, and then in brackets pelvis. And then we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 different numbers or floats separated by uh, space characters. Uh, so what, what do they mean? Um, we have hbox, then we have the group number, and the group number refers to the hitbox group. Then we have the specific bone name that that hitbox is attached to, and that bone will determine the origin of the hitbox, where it starts out. And then we have the location and rotation properties. We have the min x, min y, min z and the max x, max y, and max z. And those two points are gonna determine um, the starting and ending position of the hitbox, like how big it is and just pretty much the location. Uh, on top of that, you can add rotation. You got rotation x, y, and z. And the final um, value is one that's unique, I think, to CSGO. I'm not sure if other games support spherical hitboxes. But this uh, determines how spherical the hitbox is. A value of zero would mean it's a rectangle, and the higher this value gets, the more spherical the hitbox gets. So we'll, have a, we'll experiment with that as well. And uh, just to explain the QC file again, um, in this case we have, um, we have a hitbox with a pelvis attached to the pelvis bone. Its hitbox group is zero, which means it's a generic hitbox, and that's not actually what we want. This is just what was auto-generated. And then we have the various um, positions and rotations that the um, compiler, the model compiler, auto-generated for us. And we have um, all the uh, spherical values to zero. We have to add those in ourselves. Um, above here, we have surface prop, which you want to leave as flesh. Um, you don't want to change joint surface prop either. The hbox set, you probably do want to change. So this is for CSGO, so we're going to be using the C-Strike uh, hbox set and control S, save that. All right, now we're ready to begin actually editing our hitboxes. One thing I like to do in Notepad++ is set the language to something like C++ just to get a bit of color, just I think it looks nicer. Probably do that also for this read-only default one that we have. And um, yeah, the first thing I would do is, first of all, you wanna remove anything that's not gonna be in your final hitbox. Uh, so, the way you can determine what uh, hitboxes you should have is by uh, looking at other models that are completed. Uh, maybe you can look at the default models in the game to see what you need. So I know all these, um, I don't need any of these hitboxes that have the twist in them. So I can just remove those. So you want to remove these as well. All right, uh, looking through this, um, we have we have one two three spine one spine underscore two spine underscore three. Uh, we probably need spine underscore zero. All right, we don't need uh, the clavicle. All right, we're probably gonna get rid of ankle R and ankle L as well. 
And this is starting to look like all the uh, groups that we'll need. Again, like I said, we need a spine, spine zero, and we'll just add that in. And remove the clavicle L. And yeah, it's looking pretty good. All right, just to explain again all the different uh, bones and where they are, if we start from the bottom here, we have ball R, which is going to be the right uh, the right foot right at the bottom is pretty much going to be the where the foot stamp goes. Um, we have ball L again, similarly on the other side. So the R and L just means left and right. Uh, we have leg lower R, which is the leg from kind of like the ankle to pretty much the knee, more or less. We have leg upper, which is from the knee to kind of like the pelvis area or maybe the upper thighs. Um, then we have all the finger ones and then they're just the various like actual fingers on the hand. We have uh, the hand, which is hand underscore R for example, which is going to just be this general area. So pretty much like the palm um, or just, just pretty much the hand excluding the fingers I guess. Uh, you have arm lower R, which is going to be from here to pretty much the elbow, so that area right there. And so that's lower arm um, underscore lower R. And then we have arm um, upper R, which is from the elbow to the shoulder, pretty much. And then we have the same thing for the other hand. We have, starting from the top here now, we have the pelvis, which is just going to be, you know, right there. Uh, we have spine zero, which is just going to be a little higher than that, pretty much around the belly button, around the hips right there. Spine underscore one, just a little higher than that as well. Spine underscore two is pretty much the chestal area, and then spine underscore three is gonna be pretty much right here at the top, underneath the neck, and between the arms. And then we have obviously the neck, which is just gonna be a little box around the neck, and finally the head, which is the head hitbox. And yeah, those are all the different hitboxes. All right, so let's get started. So one thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the render tab and turn on normal mapping, just cause it looks better. Uh, feel free to experiment with all the different hotkeys and whatnot. I'll try to explain if I use any hotkeys, because I usually do. And yeah, so what I want to do is I want to go back into my uh, QC file. And I want to, first of all, fix up all these hitbox groups. Because like I mentioned in the checklist, um, there's various hitbox groups. And not all of them are correct with the auto-generated one. In fact, they're all zero. So we want to fix them up. So starting from the bottom, we got the right the right leg essentially and the right leg is hitbox group 7 so what you want to do is just replace the hitbox group with 7 for all the hitboxes that are part of the right leg now we're onto the left leg and that's going to be hitbox group 6 just going to replace those with 6 uh, now we're onto the fingers for the right hand so from here all the way up to here we have um, the right hand and that's going to be hitbox group 5 all right and now we have the left hand, and that's going to be hitbox group four. So just keep going. All right, we have the head and neck, which are hitbox group one. And then for this particular one, uh, we'll start from the top. The pelvis you want to have as hitbox group um, three. And for spine zero, you also want to have that as hitbox group three, because that is the lower body. And then at spine one, we're starting to enter the upper body. So the last three I like to have as hitbox group four. I mean, sorry, hitbox group two rather for the upper body. Now, once you have all that, you want to save control S. So once your QC file is saved, go back into Crowbar and uh, compile your model again. Again, make sure you wait until the compiler is ready before you refresh it in Half-Life Model Viewer. And then you want to go back to Half-Life Model Viewer, press F5 to refresh, and then press control H to bring up the hitboxes. And now you see we have the same auto-generated hitboxes that we had before, uh, minus the ones that we deleted that we didn't need. And now they're all color-coded because they represent the correct hitbox group. And when you look at this, you pretty much almost have what you want. And all you need to do is you need to go through every hitbox individually and fine-tune the starting and ending positions and how long they are. So, for example, you see that the lower leg here and the upper leg are overlapping. Um, the pelvis is way too low because there's obviously, if you toggle it off and on, there's like a gap between the thighs. 
and there's a massive pelvis hitbox covering that. Um, if you are strapped for time, you could probably leave it at this, and this is like a, you know, not the best, but it's like a okay-ish hitbox model. Not really though, but um, yeah. And really, it's just how much you want to work at it. If you want to be a perfectionist, you can spend a lot of time making like a super ideal hitboxes. Uh, some player models have really odd shapes. Um, I did one the other day that had like legs that went like this, and then this, and this, and then two things. Oh, yeah, it was really weird. So you had to use multiple hitboxes, and I'll cover that too. And uh, yeah. All right, so you want to go back to your QC file. And what you want to do is... You want to comment out all these lines, all the hbox lines, so you have no other hitboxes there when you go to edit your hitboxes. I'm going to press Control Q in Notepad++ to do this. You can manually do this, and you can comment out a line using two forward slashes. And then you want to uncomment the one line you do want to work on. So in this example, I'm going to try to fix this hitbox, the one at the bottom. This is the right uh, foot, pretty much. And I'm going to press Save. And then I'm going to go back and recompile. And again, you just do this every single time. Go back, you recompile, and then look at it in the model viewer. And then just wait for that to compile. Go back into the model viewer. Press F5, Control H, and there you have it. So you have this hitbox radio on the right foot. And you pretty much want to um, start to fix this. All right. So again, uh, let me explain again how to work around the model viewer. Um, if you left click and just move your mouse around, that's going to just rotate the, um, the model. If you left click and go up and down, that's going to zoom in and zoom in and out. If you hold shift and left click, you can move around the model without, um, uh, yeah, so around the pretty much canvas, you can move it around. And I think that's all you need to know at this point. So if you left click and zoom in again, and just center that. All right. So we have this here, and it's already a decent, um, yeah, it's already a decent hitbox. It pretty much covers what it needs to cover. Uh, you are going to have this gap here. There's nothing really you can do about that. I mean, it's fine. It's not a big deal. Um, but yeah, it does mean if someone shoots this part, it is going to activate the collision detection, but um, it's fine. So just to learn your way around how to edit hitboxes, you want to go to the uh, Bones tab. And here you want to select the bone you're working on. So in this case, the bone I'm working on is ball underscore R. Once you have that selected, you'll see a list of hitboxes here. And these numbers, 0, 1, 2, or whatever the numbers may be, correspond to how many hitboxes there are for that specific bone. So we can have multiple hitboxes for a bone. So if we had ball underscore R, and if we had another one of these, um, we could. this would mean that there are two hitboxes for, for the same uh, bone. And that's possible um, if you have a really odd shape, like let's say this was a player model that had, I don't know, two feet attached to one leg, or was like an alien or something, you might want to have two to uh, correctly represent the mesh. And um, that's fine to do, just it's best to keep it keep the number of overall hitboxes as low as possible because uh, that's going to be the best performance wise. All these are used in collision detection algorithms, so you don't want to have too many. But um, yeah, in this case, we only need one. And in most cases, for most player models, you only need the defaults that we have here, but sometimes you will need more. So I will do one for the head when I get to it just to explain how two hitboxes would look like. But for now, we're just going to keep using one. And then once you once you have the right bone selected, you want to click on Highlight Hitbox, and that's gonna like show these um, editing tools. Now you can edit you can edit the hitbox in various ways. You can rotate, you can translate the min and the max, and that, all that does is pretty much use the model viewer to edit these values here. Uh, you can do this manually, but using the model viewer obviously makes it a lot easier. We will need to use um, the QC file to edit things like the sphere, because you can't do that from the model viewer. But for now, we're just going to go back to the model viewer. And let's say we wanted to rotate this um, around. And these color codes, are blue, green, and red, correspond to pretty much the x-axis, the y-axis, and the z-axis. 
So in this case, let's uh, rotate this alongside the red, the red axis. So that's what that does there. So if, if it was like a bit misaligned, you could align it up just a bit. Um, there's the green one. So hold up. And when you're rotating, uh, the model viewer works in a weird way. Uh, what you want to do is you want to click, you want to left click on the ring that you want to edit. So let's say I want to rotate alongside the red axis. I want to left click on the red, but I want to move the, my mouse cursor either to the left of the screen or the right of the screen. The right of the screen would increase it, the left decreases it. You don't want to move it in the direction of the axis. So what I mean by that is, let's say I want to edit this alongside the blue axis. I wouldn't click and then move my mouse up or in this direction because I want it to go this way. I have to move it either left or right, always. So I click and move it either to the left and that moves it that way. If I want to go the other way, I move it to the right. Um, I never want to um, move it up like this way because that's not going to do uh, what you want. You want to either go to the left or to the right. Going up, if I go in a straight line up, it's not even doing anything. All right, so put that back where it was. All right, now looking at the looking at the min, you can again uh, it's the same concept here. You want to click and either go left and right. You don't want to go to where the arrow is pointing. You want to just click and go either left or right. So this is the first point, and that's the min point, and then there's the max point on the other corner. And basically, you just uh, change these to edit how the hitbox looks. So if I wanted to make this larger or smaller, I could just edit it depending on what I wanted. Again, if it was like too high, so we've got the min point here. Again. All right, so this hitbox is pretty much fine on its own. I didn't even need to do anything. Um, once you have the hitbox the way you want it, what you want to do is click on the uh, update hitbox button. Just, just spam that and then press generate QC. Once you press generate QC, it copies the current QC file to your clipboard. So we're going to go back to Notepad++. I'm going to open a new tab and I'm going to paste that in. And this is what's been generated for us because we're only working with one hitbox right now. It's generated this one line for our hitbox. And what we're going to do is we're going to highlight this and copy it and go back to our actual QC file. And we're going to replace the line we had here and save. And then delete this uh, temp file. And then we can uh, recompile. And I'm doing this really slowly just to uh, show you guys what to do. But we press recompile, wait for it to compile, and refresh in the model viewer. And obviously nothing changes because that's the hitbox we had. Um, if you ever do mess up um, the hitbox, so let's say I was editing this hitbox. So ball R, that's the burn. And let's say I'm editing this hitbox and I like completely mess it up. And I want to go back to what I had, just press F5. And then just go back to the burn. Reselect the burn and then you have it. I'll reload it in from the model file. All right, so now we're going to do the next burn. So what I want to do is I'm just going to leave this uncommented because I do want to see the hitbox for the foot when I'm doing the lower, the lower leg. So I'm going to uncomment this, and I'm just going to recompile. All right, refresh F5. All right, and I just did what I told you guys not to do is refresh before the com compiler is over. So I'm going to have to restart my model viewer. All right, so this is what we have. Now this model right here is not ideal. Um, the reason it's not ideal is because it's a, it's a rectangle and that was fine for the foot, but now we probably want to use spheres, which CSGO support, just to get a, just to get a better shape for the lower, um, lower leg. Uh, so the way we do that is, first of all, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the right bone and I'm, I'm going to get the uh, the height and width of the hitbox to be more in line with what I want. So again, click and go either left and right to reduce it or increase it. And I want it to be right about that knee area. All 
right? And what you want to do is when you're deciding where you should stop, you want to stop at the point where a little bit of the mesh can stick out. You don't have to cover it completely. Like if you have this, it's not a big deal if a bullet happens to just from this angle hit that tiny part of the mesh and not collide. If it means that you don't have to make the mesh too big and then have other parts uh, hit when it shouldn't really hit. So in this case, we're just going to have it like sort of like here uh, from the back. Maybe so this is this probably needs to be again click the update. This probably needs to be rotated a bit. And this is probably the more time consuming component um, compared to fixing up the attachments, which doesn't take as long. And every uh, model is different. So uh, when you're working with different models, you're going to have to like make um, decisions on how you want the hitbox to look. All right, so we have the general shape, but it's still a rectangle and I did want it to be a sphere. So what I'm going to do is going to click on update hitbox, generate the QC, and then copy that to the clipboard again, paste it here. And I'm going to copy that into my main QC file just so I have these changes. And now this last um, this last uh, value on the line, again, if you refer to this, it was the how the number that decides how spherical the object is. So what we want to do is we want to put a value in here that is greater than zero to make the hitbox more spherical. So if we do two and recompile, all right, you'll notice that the object now turns spherical. This might mess up the the location and rotation you have set up, but it's not too hard to go back and just fix that up. Also, when it comes to hitboxes, you want to make sure they overlap just a tiny bit just to cover the entire mesh. Um, if they don't overlap, you might have little gaps, which might be not ideal. All right, so at this point, we have this hitbox. Um, it's OK. Um, it's really good at the bottom here. At the top, it's fine. On this, on the back here, it has a little bit of a uh, location which it doesn't quite hit. Um, I think the best thing to do would be increasing the the size of the sphere, just so it covers a little bit more. And the downside is you're going to cover a little bit more of nothing here. But I think it's a good choice. So again, we're going to update, go back, and copy this again to have the changes we made. And we're going to take the 2 for the sphere and we're going to make it maybe 2.5. Going to recompile that. And this should just make it uh, bigger in place. Just actually wait for the compile to finish. F5 to refresh. And that's what we have. And that to me looks a lot better. Gonna align that.
All right, so that looks good. And uh, you want to update the hitbox and copy the QC back again. Save and compile. And refresh. All right, that pretty much looks good. The rest of the video, I'm going to be um, speeding it up just so you don't have to watch me do the entire thing. The process is pretty much exactly the same. You want to do the exact same thing for every other bone. Um, the reason I had you save the auto-generated one is if you ever mess up and you need to um, go back to the start, starting hitbox, the auto-generated hitbox, you come back here and just copy the one you need and then paste it in the thing. Make sure you fix up the hitbox group and then just um, change it. So I'm gonna go through this and at the end, I'm gonna also talk about having multiple hitboxes for the same bone and yeah. I'm not a bad 
All right, at this point we have the uh, hitboxes all done. So I just went through and uh, fixed up the hitboxes for all the different uh, bones. And there's a few things I wanna go over. So um, one thing you can do with um, the hitboxes as you make them is when you do one specific part, so when I did this um, entire um, right leg, I can copy it over and then put it on the left leg and then I make minor adjustments based on that because the, um, the min x and the min uh, the min values and the max values, they're offset from the bone. So if you have a bone here and you have a bone here, if you offset it from the same distance, they're likely going to be pretty close. So uh, just to do that in the QC file, so let's say you, you do these three and fix all these up and you now want to move over to the other leg, you can just um, copy these values. So I'm copying the one from ball R to ball L, paste it, and then I compile, and then I can then make minor adjustments based off that. And you can do that for a lot of things. You can do that for the legs. You can do that for each hand. Um, you could do that for, you can even do it between models. Let's say you have two models that are like very similar. You could just copy over um, all the values and then make minor adjustments. So that might save you a bit of time. Um, besides that, um, in terms of what I didn't change, the fingers I usually never change. I usually just change the hand one and then the lower and upper arms. I don't change the fingers because they're usually pretty good when they're auto-generated and they don't matter too much anyway. Um, when it comes to like clothing, I usually don't make the hitbox like match the clothing exactly. It's more about the body and where the body is. Um, when it comes to the head, um, I try to center it and I try to only use one hitbox for the head. I don't want there to be multiple hitboxes for the head usually or anywhere else for that matter unless I actually have to. Uh, so you can see like a bit of the head isn't in the hitbox but that's usually fine because the main part of the head is in the hitbox. Um, and it's obviously a massive improvement over the previous model. So I'm going to just quickly demonstrate how to use um, multiple hitboxes for the same bone. So let's just say this person had like a really, this player model had a weird head and they had like, you know, something extra or you just wanted to cover this hair just for whatever reason. You go back to your QC file, you find the, the head um, hitbox and you just duplicate it just like that. So you pretty much have two lines that are the same. Uh, you recompile, all right, and then you refresh and now you have the two head hitboxes. You wanna go over to head underscore zero, the bone, and now you'll see there's two hitboxes for that single bone. There's this one and this one. Now obviously they're exactly in the same position, but now what you can do is you can go to um, the second one that we made and just you know tweak it just to cover a different area. So I'm just gonna do this really quickly. Um, yeah, so something like that just as a quick example. And then you would uh, compile it and then now you have two different head hitboxes and they cover, they represent the mesh more accurately. Um, so why wouldn't you do this for every single spot, like the nose, the chin, and everywhere possible, just to make it like the best hitbox ever? Well, the more hitboxes you add, the slower the performance will be because of the um, coll collision detection algorithms and whatnot. So you don't want to have too many, but if it makes sense, don't be afraid to add them in. And yeah, so I'm just going to undo that because I don't really need uh, this specific extra head hitbox and yeah that's pretty much done so this model is now pretty much done and it's ready to be tested and by the looks of it it's going to be a really good accurate model for this uh, mesh so uh, we have a model here and we want to fix up the attachments that it has so uh, if we press Control a in the model viewer we can uh, have a look at the various attachments that this model um, has and basically what attachments are is they allow other models to be attached to this model so things like face masks um, things like grenades guns knives um, you got the c4 here and you usually want to you usually want your model to support all the attachments that the game supports that gives you maximum compatibility with the game itself and other plugins that might want to use these attachments and yeah let's begin so first of all if we look at the qc file we can see all the attachments here with the dollar attachment. And the way to read this is you have a specific attachment name, 
and it's mapped or linked to a specific bone. So we have, for example, primary, the primary attachment uh, linked to the primary jugal joint um, bone. And then you have some um, transformations happening and a rotation happening. So you can actually offset the um, attachment um, and rotate it as well. And the attachment is just a point. It's just, uh, if I bring this back up, it's just a point somewhere. So it's uh, usually offset from a specific bone and it's just a point. And the rotation of it determines how the model is going to be placed um, onto the body. So um, if I bring up my checklist here. All right, so we have a specific list and each game will have its own list of attachments. Um, CSGO will differ from other games. CSGO also has the legacy attachments and then the newer attachments um, because of the bones that changed. So depending on the game you have, you might need more attachments or different attachments. So just keep that in mind. So in CSGO, based on the TM lead variant B model, uh, these are the kind of attachments that you have. Uh, you have the legacy weapon bone, you have the weapon hand L, the weapon hand R, the primary, the pistol, the knife, e-holster, grenade zero all the way to grenade four, so five total grenades, uh, the diffuse kit, the C4, the face mask, the clip limit, and these are two optional ones that aren't in all the base player models, but I like to add them in anyway, the foot plant left and the foot plant R. And the common attachment positions of these attachments are the legacy weapon burn, and if I just bring this over here, Alright, so we have the legacy weapon bone is usually just floating in front of the right hand. So it would be this one right here. And that one right there. We have the weapon hand L and weapon hand R, and that's just the left and right hands pretty much there and there. We have the primary, which is where the gun, where the primary gun is going to be put uh, when you don't have it equipped. So um, that's usually something like an AK-47 on the back, usually. Um, and it's usually on the right side of the back. So on this side, the right side. But it can be on the middle or the left, and it's usually just facing down. Uh, you have the pistol. Um, I like to put the pistol on the leg, on the right leg, upper right leg, facing down. Um, the knife, I like to put that on the left leg facing down, or kind of facing diagonal, which is what the default skins do. Uh, the C4 is usually in the, on the back, in the um, upper back area, usually on the left side, but it can be on the right side. The E-holster, I'm not exactly oh, we got the diffuse kit, which usually goes like on the bottom right here, and it just wraps around. Uh, the diffuse kit goes there, so we have the e-holster. I don't know what the e-holster is actually used for in CSGO, but it's usually put here, like offset from the upper leg on the left, and it's just put like mid-air there. I don't know what exactly it's used for. We've got the grenades. I usually like to put them on the right side, starting from the back here, just one here, another here, and then they just pretty much wrap around. Uh, the face mask pretty much goes directly at the center point of the face. Uh, usually like right here, so any mask you put on just goes on top of the face. Uh, the clip limit is just literally on top of the head. Um, it kind of clips, it kind of cuts off anything else that the player model has. So you want to put it at the highest point where everything else um, is underneath it. And the two optional ones that I like to put in is the left footstep and the right footstep, um, which is pretty much just right here at the bottom, just where the feet are stepping. And yeah, those are pretty much the uh, common attachment positions. So when you're working with attachments, um, what you want to do is you want to make sure the angles are correct, because even if you get the point right, for example, if you have the C4, and even if you put it in a pretty good spot, like here, you want to make sure that the rotation is right because you don't want the um, angles to be wrong because then you might have the model attached backwards. So that's important. So the easiest way to do this is just to copy the attachments from another model uh, for the sole reason of getting all the um, getting all the rotations right. So that's exactly what I'm going to do here. This is just an example of the attachments with proper rotations. I'm just going to copy those. 
and just pretty much paste them there. And as you can see, um, this uh, by default, this model did not have all the attachments we needed. Um, it had a few ones that we don't really need, like we don't need to have SMGs in a unique spot. It was missing, um, so if I just paste this here, it was missing stuff like the knife, I think the pistol, and that's really important in certain game modes and stuff. So we're just going to put these attachments in, and we're just going to compile. Alright, so now that we've compiled, these are all the attachments that we have. Um, what we need to do now is go through the attachments and pretty much fine tune them. And the fine tuning needs to be done um, for each attachment and some of them will be okay right off the bat. So usually the legacy weapon burn, the um, foot plant left and right, the weapon hand left and right. These ones don't have any transformations or rotations. Um, th this one does, but it's always like at the bottom. So those ones you don't usually need to edit. Stuff like the clip limit, uh, you do want to change. So we're just going to start from the bottom and work our way up. So press Control A again to get rid of the attachments. And if we come to the bottom, all right, we can see foot plant right and left. And you just want to leave them there. They're pretty much fine. You go to the clip limit, and now that's at the top. All right, so this is the clip limit, and basically where it is right now is fine because if you like imagine this um, green line being uh, extrapolated, it doesn't cut off the actual mesh, so it's fine as a clip limit, just literally above the player model. Um, yeah, and it's never really gonna yeah, it's never really gonna cut off the um, the mesh. Some things to look out for is if you have a jiggle joint or some some sort of thing that moves that could go above, you might want to increase the clip limit. But in this case, uh, we should be fine. So an example is the scarf. You see how the scarf moves? Um, if that was up there, you'd make sure that it would always be under the clip limit at all times. The clip limit is fine as well. All right, we get to the face mask. And the face mask is not in a good spot. It's kind of like on the forehead. What we want it to be, where we want it to be, is in the center of the face. So right about there. And we want it to be inside the face just a little bit. And the way you actually modify um, the attachments is like this. You have this on the attachments tab. You click on the attachment you want to change and you want to modify um, the location and rotation. So these buttons here are for the location and these buttons are for the rotation. Pressing negative X will move the attachment point negative um, <coughs> negative ways. Ah. Pressing negative X will move the attachment point in the on the X axis in the negative direction. And plus X will do the opposite. And the difference between the lowercase and uppercase X's is just this one moves more than the lowercase. So this is like small movements, and these are larger movements. And the same is true for the Y axes and the Z axes. And yeah. And with the rotation, it's pretty much the same thing. It's just uh, this one rotates in a specific direction. And so does that one, so does this one. So you pretty much, what you want to do is you pretty much want to use these buttons to get the attachment in the right position. So let's just do that real quick. So we have this pretty much spot on. We just need it to be moved into the face a bit. So right about there might be good. And finally, um, also keep in mind the rotation is already uh, fine. So you don't need to like mess with the rotation. Um, too much so you do want the uh, red sticking out the blue straight up and the green to the right but in this case we're gonna have to just angle the angle the axes slightly so it matches the angle the like the face a bit because you see the face is kind of like angled like this if that makes sense so if you put a mask on you want it to be kind of like angled a little bit so what we want to do is just Angle this just a tiny bit. Yep, something like that. And that looks like a pretty good face mask attachment to me. Now you would need to go in game and test it just to make sure it's pretty good. But um, 
that looks like it's pretty good to me. Once you have it where you want it, you want to click on this text box where it says QC string. You want to copy the whole thing, go back to your QC file, and pretty much overwrite the old one. So that was for the face mask. We're going to highlight that and paste it in. And save and recompile. And go back and refresh. And now if you see we have the face mask where we want it in the new position. And yeah, so we pretty much want to do this again for, whoops, pretty much want to do this again for all the different um, attachments. Um, I'm going to speed through the, the video now and just do that for the attachments. So I'm going to speed up the video so you don't have to watch it all. Um, things to keep in mind, when you're doing this, you want to just do specific things like I'll go through all the attachments just to say what you want to do. Um, so for the C4, which is the next one up, you want it to be, again, top left corner. You want it to be attached to the body. So right now there's a massive gap. You want it to be pretty much sticking. Um, this is probably angled the wrong way. You want it to be kind of like facing the uh, perpendicular to the back. So facing the orientation of the back. Uh, for the diffuse kit, you want that literally um, at the center of the bottom and you want it to be touching so you want it to like go all the way in and that will just pretty much wrap the diffuse kit around the back here for the grenades the grenades are already in a decent spot um the only thing i might change is bringing them in a bit closer to the body because they're a little too far the gap between the bo the body and the um grenade attachment position uh going up we got the e-holster again the e-holster is literally um, just floating in the air to the side, so that's pretty much fine already. There's no massive adjustments needed. Uh, with the knife, you want this to be pretty much attached. You just want a tiny gap, maybe like this much, and you want to bring this in, and it's otherwise fine. And the knife's going to be like, it's going to start here, the handle's going to be here, and it's going to be facing this way, and the top of the knife is here, and the bottom is going to be like here. So the knife will just literally be like facing that way alongside the red axis and for the pistol again same thing you want you want this to have a tiny a very tiny gap you might want to rotate it a bit this way just so it um again it met the red axis matches the like line here so it matches the body and you want to have a tiny gap here and you want to just bring that in and for the primary the primary is a pretty hard one especially if the back has a weird shape in this case it's not that bad uh, you just want to angle this the correct way and you just want to bring it in and attach it right here to the back you're gonna you want to make sure that it's uh, not centered you want to you want it to be halfway between the center and the edge here so you want it to be like right there and then for the weapon hand r and l you don't need to change those they're already fine and same with the legacy weapon bone those can just stay where they are at zero 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 and with no rotations all right so i'm now going to speed up the video and do all these and once i'm done i'll show you the finished uh, result and go through all the positions again just so you can see where they are exactly
All right, now that I'm done, um, I'll just go through all the attachments just to show you the final positions that I ended up using. Um, so you have the foot plant, turn those off. You have the foot plant right, foot plant left that I didn't touch. Clip limit, which I didn't touch either. You got the face mask, which was the one we did at the start. And you got the C4, it's really just attached to the body there, top left corner the same uh, orientation got the diffuse kit just gonna just wrap around the bottom there got the grenades uh, so that's grenade 4, grenade 3, grenade 2, grenade 1 and grenade 0 all I did there was just bring them in a bit and um, yeah got the e-holster just brought it in a little bit and just aligned it so it's in the middle of the thigh and we have the knife just bring that in so that's gonna just sit nicely there the pistol on this other side is just going to go straight down there. And the primary, which is going to be something like the AK, just sitting on the back, uh, pointing face down. Uh, not center, you want it a little bit to the right. Um, and then you didn't want to change the weapon hand, uh, weapon handle and the legacy weapon mode. And then yeah, that's pretty much all the attachments and they're pretty much perfect. Uh, after you have all those and you've copied all the QC strings for each one um, into your QC file and you've compiled, um, you're pretty much ready to test this out in game. And if you need to, if you want to make any adjustments after trying it out, uh, feel free to just come back and um, change these up. You might need to um, uh, you might need to change the uh, model name every time you do this, just because the um, at least CSGO caches all the models, so if you want to change it and you don't want to restart your game every single time, you just increment this number like T1, T2, T3 until you're happy and then you can um, have a final version called underscore V2 or something. That's all there is to it. Check out the description for some useful information and thanks for watching.